This is BBC News. I'm Carrie Gracie. The headlines at nine. Payday lender Wonga defends its business model ahead of an appearance in front of MP shortly. We'll bring you that live. Paying their way, a new study says immigrants to the UK have made a substantial contribution to public finances. Ed Miliband setting out plans to give companies tax breaks if they pay their staff the living wage. I'm Tim Wilcox, and in the next hour, another chapter in the so-called Plebgate affair. Two police officers accused of misleading Parliament over comments made by the former Cabinet Minister Andrew Mitchell are to appear again this afternoon. And countdown to take off India's first space mission to Mars is due to lift off within the next 10 minutes. Good morning and welcome to BBC News. The payday loan company Wonga has defended its record ahead of an appearance before MPs this morning, claiming the majority of its customers are happy with their terms. Three of the biggest payday lending firms will appear before a Commons committee in the next 15 minutes over the way they agree and handle loans. The firms have been criticised by many, including the Archbishop of Canterbury, who called their interest rates shocking. Ben Moore reports. Payday lenders may have a reputation for sky-high rates, but now it's MPs who are taking interest in the way these firms attract and treat their customers. The UK has become a crock of gold for payday lenders. Our lax regulation means they've flooded in from all over the world, trying to expand here while they've been banned elsewhere. Now, while regulation will start next April, and I welcome that, after all, if you're in the middle of des a desert, even a glass of water is a help, I would like to see it go a lot further. Wonga, Quickquid and Mr Lender, three of the biggest payday lenders, will appear before the Business, Innovations and Skills Select Committee. MPs are expected to follow up a damning report by the Office of Fair Trading that found deep-rooted problems in the industry, something a market leader denies. We decline eight out of ten first-time applications. Um, and what that results in is that the vast, vast majority of people pay us back on time. Our overall default rate is less than 7%. And when you mentioned rollovers earlier, that is not something that we do. On occasions, up to three, we will extend that loan. That's less than 7% of people that will extend once and less than 1% of people who will extend three times. Other interested parties who will address the committee today include representatives from WITCH and the Citizens Advice Bureau. And not before time, government research suggests more than a million people plan to take out a payday loan to cover the cost of Christmas. Ben Moore, BBC News. Well, that committee hearing due to start at 9.15, Chief Executive of the Citizens Advice Bureau will be here on BBC News in about 10 minutes' time to talk to us about payday loans. 
And uh, we'll be covering that, of course, uh, throughout the morning. Now, um, immigrants who have come to Britain since the year 2000 have made a substantial contribution to public finances. That's according to a new study. A report from University College London found they were less likely to live in social housing or claim benefits than people who were born in Britain. Here's our Home Affairs correspondent, Danny Shaw. The debate about immigration has been fuelled by claims of benefit tourism. It's argued that migrants deliberately come to the UK to live off the state. But this detailed report suggests those claims aren't true. Rather than being a drain on Britain's finances, the contribution of migrants who've arrived since 2000 has been consistently positive and remarkably strong. The study found that migrants were 45% less likely to receive state benefits or tax credits than people already living in Britain. They were 3% less likely to live in council homes or other social housing. And their net contribution to public finances was estimated to be £25 billion over a period of 10 years. There were slightly different findings from a separate analysis of immigrants living in Britain since 1995. Here they found that those from outside the European economic area claimed more in benefits than they paid in taxes, mainly because they tended to have more children. The government said it welcomed people who contributed to the economy, but it needed strict rules to ensure the benefits system wasn't abused. Danny Shaw, BBC News. Well, with us now, one of the report authors, Professor Christian Dustman. Good morning. Good morning. What stands out for you? Well, I think it's uh, important to bring uh, factual knowledge into this very sensitive and very emotional debate. Uh, that was the main reason why we started this report about one year ago. It's a very uh, intensive work behind those figures. Uh, and and uh, I think it is uh, very much in contradiction to some of the anecdotal evidence uh, we have seen about uh, welfare uh, use of, in particular, EEA immigrants. Uh -huh. um, because obviously what um, the concern is, we're obviously going to see Romanians and Bulgarians with the freedom to uh, come within the European Union shortly and the worry that, that they might not fit the um, pattern of those coming to contribute to the economy. Well, the immigrants we have seen coming from Europe over the last decade have been remarkably well educated, far better educated than uh, previous immigrant waves uh, and also far better educated than natives. Uh, I don't see a strong reason why this should change for coming uh, immigrants. We will uh, see. And over when the you next talk year. about them being remarkably well educated, is that all of them from every country, or are there? I mean, we, we or are there some countries where that applies and others where it doesn't? Uh, that is a good question. So I can't answer that question straight away because we have done not that particular analysis. Mm. But when we cut that down to some of the major European countries, education of individuals from those countries has been uh, much better. For instance, we know that uh, individuals coming from Poland mm. uh, since 2004 have been far better educated than the UK population. I suppose one of the things, though, you can imagine from the point of view of the British public, they already see uh, some Romanians and Bulgarians, for example, begging. Mm -hmm. Now, these are not presumably the highly skilled migrants that you're talking about. Well, absolutely. So this is an, a sensitive issue, but uh, that particular population in Romania and in Bulgaria uh, you are referring to is not representative, of course, for the Bulgarian and Romanian population. Uh, however, this report is for immigrants who have arrived since 2000 uh, and uh, looks at the period between 2000 and 2011. It's not looking into the future, and I'm very happy to report on perhaps new findings uh, when those immigrants from Bulgaria and Romania have come to the UK. Do come back and tell us then, Professor Absolutely. Dustin. Thanks so much. Thank you. Seven minutes past nine. Let's just take you live to India because uh, the countdown started, what, 56 hours ago? We're now.